Hello friends, this is Libor Ondras, music director of the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra. I want to welcome you and thank you for your continued support of GLCO, especially during these challenging times. I'm here today to share some information and introduce a piece that we are featuring this week on web. It's a piece that brings back fond memories of our European Tour 2017, where we performed it successfully many, many times. It's a piece that was written by a young, budding composer full of romantic spirit and youthful energy. A piece that already features some of his characteristics that have later earned him a very rightful place in the history of music. Coincidentally, we are celebrating his birthday, June 2nd, 1857, outside of Worcester. Edward Elgar was born to family that surrounded him with music. His father was an amateur musician, um, church organist, conductor, music dealer. The piece itself, with very unassuming title, Serenade for Strings, uh, could be interpreted many, many different ways. A uh, piece intended for uh, an evening performance, perhaps outdoors, performance that could honor or express love for somebody, or for music buffs, a piece or instrumental work that features several movements in a similar fashion of, uh, say, uh, orchestral suite. Well, the origins of this serenade go back to 1888, when Elgar conducted his own composition in Worcester, um, titled Three Pieces for String Orchestra. The three pieces were really three movements, the first one called Spring Song, second one Elegy, and third one Finale. That was received very enthusiastically. Unfortunately, the manuscript has vanished and it wasn't until four years later that, according to some scholars, some of this music re-emerges in the Serenade for Strings. Year after the performance of the three pieces, Elgar married Caroline, um, Caroline um, Alice Roberts, who became his stouch, stouch supporter and inspiration, a uh, great confidant and critic. And according to his own scribbled words in the manuscript of the serenade, Braut, how he affectionately referred to his wife, had a great deal to do with these little tunes. Those are his own words. So, uh, scholars believe that it was Caroline's encouragement to rework some, rework some of those uh, movements to create this new um, composition that um, he continued to refer to as one of his favorite pieces. In fact, uh, in 1933, just a few ma months before uh, Elgar's death, he chose this piece to be recorded on an LP, and he himself conducted the recording session. Um, and, as I said, often referred to the serenade as one of his favorite pieces. The first movement of the serenade, Allegro Piacevole, opens with a rhythmical energetic motif introduced by violas, which is then followed by the first motif or first theme introduced by violins, first violins, and echoed by second violins. Um, this is then brought back at the end of the first movement, right after the central episode in E major in parallel major key. The second movement, Larghetto, likely opens with first violins echoed by second violins, introducing this yearning motif that sort of serves as an introduction. And from that point on, the melody unfolds in very similar fashion to his uh, 
Nimrod movement in his Enigma variations. And it builds on intensity and it just keeps spinning until the very final time when the whole movement cl calms down and closes quietly. The third movement, finale, um, introduces rather different characteristics, um, not the expected brisk and exuberant closing of the piece, but rather a uh, more pastoral, simpler setting uh, in 12 a time signature, um, introducing this beautiful tune that again is introduced by first violins and then shared for, with the rest of the ensemble. Um, we hear echoes of the opening theme from the first movement and then uh, rather than finishing with a very strong cadential point, um, he chooses to calm things down and close the movement and the whole piece with measures of serenity. Serenade for Strings is one of Elgar's handful compositions featuring strings. The other one being Introduction and Allegro, his string quartet and his quintet for piano and strings. Elgar was an aspiring string player, uh, wanted to become a violin virtuoso, which undoubtedly lends itself to fantastic idiomatic writing. But beside that, the piece captures the intimacy of string sound and sheer lyrical beauty. I hope you'll enjoy listening to Elgar's Serenade for Strings, and I hope you will join us next week. Thank you very much and stay safe.